the Vox tree inside 3D Coat version 3.1 has undergone a couple of changes here. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner of this video, that there are still some things that remain, such as creating a layer or creating a child layer by clicking the plus next to a, an active layer or the plus next to the root layer. You can also expand and contract these layers. And now you can also delete these layers by simply clicking and dragging those layers right on down to the trash can. You can do a lot of these operations here just by clicking and dragging such as reordering. Uh, you can change the, the parent of a layer just by clicking and dragging it to the plus of another layer. You can also create new layers down here as such. Let's highlight that. You can delete it that way as well. Let's go ahead and use this new duplicate layer. As you can see, we've just created a layer here. Let's move it out. And now we have two sets of tubes up here. Let's go ahead and drag that to the trash can. You can also edit the current shader. We won't be doing that in this video. You can also duplicate a layer's current settings. For instance, its resolution and local symmetry. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's pick the... Oh, let's pick the tube layer here. The tube layer has a resolution of two times. We've increased it once, so that means all the voxels have been doubled effectively. So let's go ahead and copy that. So now we have that new layer here, and just to demonstrate this, you don't see any tubes up here. That's because all we did was copy the current layer, which was the tube layer, with its settings. No volume was copied over. All right. Next up, you can copy symmetry over any axis. Let's go ahead and do that now as well. Let's activate that tube layer again. And let's turn on symmetry across the Z axis. Okay. Let's hit that button there. And you can see that it created a new tube over on this side across the Z axis. Let's hit S again and turn on symmetry across the X. And hit that again. And now we have those over on that side as well. Okay, next up, you have a little icon down here now for increased resolution. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see the tubes there are a little, little finer in detail. You can also now decrease the resolution of an object and clone it to a new layer. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and let's hide the original tube layer. And you can see here over on the fox tree, we just increased the resolution from 2 to 4, but we have that layer hidden now. And you can see here that it's decreased it and cloned it to a new layer. And the last one will allow you to clear the volume from a current layer. Let's go ahead and do that with that new tube layer that we just cloned. There you go. Pretty basic stuff. There are a number of right-click options which have remained exactly the same from the previous versions. However, there is one new feature that I have not yet discussed. So let's, let's get to it here. I want to pick a thin surface here, and I think these boards here will do nicely for that. So let's go ahead. Let's delete some of these layers here. Okay, let's pick the thin surface layer here, as I named it. Let's go ahead and select, without symmetry on, the increase tool. And what we're going to do is just poke a hole through it. Notice that the cube here indicates that I am in volume mode. That's what I want for the moment. All right, so I'm going to hold control, and I'm going to sculpt in that layer. Let's go ahead and see there. In volume mode, I'm editing the volume all the way through here. In surface mode, we're going to edit this side over here now. In surface mode, that will not happen. So let's go ahead, click that cube, and you'll see now it's a wavy line. The wavy line represents surface mode. So let's hold down control again and sculpt there. You'll notice that it's not puncturing a hole through. But if you look on the other side, we've got this crazy little uh, protrusion going all the way through. And if we change back over to volume mode, you'll see that it was actually 
going all the way through and it created a new volume there. So that's how some of the tools function inside surface mode. Let's take a look at one last thing here. Let's go back over to this side for demonstration purposes again. We're going to hold down shift to smooth. Let's go ahead and just smooth that up. And I have smoothing set to 100 at the moment. You'll notice that it's just annihilating that piece here. Now let's go ahead and activate surface mode. And over on this side we're going to hold down shift again and we're going to smooth this out. You'll notice that it's not destroying any of the volume. It's trying to maintain it while smoothing the surface at the same time. If we go and hit those edges, you'll see it, it smooths quite nicely here. It attempts to keep the volume. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video.